Why are we all so excited right now? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's football time in Tennessee. Tennessee, Virginia, this weekend in Nashville. Oh, my God. Only three days left. Come on in. Let's talk about it. Broadcasting live from the only establishment in town that can't kick him out. His own basement. The world according to Rocket. Hey there, folks. It is I, Rocket Man, the only boomer tuber who remembers when streaming was just something you did in the woods after too many beers. <laughs> Am I right? Today, we're going to take a peek and a deep dive into Tennessee, Virginia, and addressing the Cooper Mays mystery and paying our respects to Virginia and their tragedy that happened a year ago. Well, not even a year ago. Eight months ago, I guess. First off, huge shout out to each and every one of you. Your views. Thank you for subscribing. They mean the world to this old heart of mine. This old heart of mine. <laughs> yeah, I know. That surprised me, too. <laughs> if you're feeling extra generous, don't forget about that like button. For me, like it owed you money, and you know that other thing I say with that. <laughs> hey, even throw in a super thanks if you like. Heck, if you're feeling really warm and fuzzy, there's a buy me a coffee link in the description, or maybe you want to make it a whiskey, just make sure it's Tennessee whiskey. Today's monologue is brought to you by DockeryDestinations.com. Explore the world, and discover yourself. So the Tennessee-Virginia game, it's sold out like hotcakes on a Sunday morning breakfast. Looks like a whole lot of people, like you and me, are ready to see the Vols take the field, right? Why not? However, I will say, it's kind of like watching a penguin trying to fly. And pointless, but really entertaining. I mean, this scenario, Virginia... Fairly overmatched, and they just don't. <laughs> That's a penguin trying to fly. They don't have the, they have the wings yet, right? Okay, here's the T. Or should I say, the sideline gossip. Will Cooper Mays play against Virginia? Coach Heupel's been tight-lipped about this, but, you know, the story is he went under a minor procedure. What What is that? I don't know what it is. Anybody else know what it is? I mean, I haven't been following it closely, but I don't know what that minor procedure was. But he hasn't played in three and a half weeks. So that's concerning, right? Because, I mean, he is the first gear. He is gear one. He's the first gear in the offense, being the center, right? So we've been doing some shuffling around on that interior line. And we'll see. Just have to trust Heupel that he's got this, that he knows how to figure this out. In my opinion, here's what we need to see on Saturday. Number one, we need to see how the OL works without Cooper Mays. Because I kind of have a funny feeling about this. <clears throat> I hope I'm wrong. But... There sure is a lot of secrecy about this this thing. Why don't they just come right out and say? Right? I mean, I know they don't want to give away all their their secrets and whatever, but is the guy going to play or not? They say, well, it's a day-to-day -day thing. We're just waiting to see. No, it's not. He's not playing Saturday. Right? He hadn't played in three and a half, hadn't practiced in three and a half weeks. He's not playing. Ollie Lane's going to be the center. Right? Number two. We need to see what that chemistry is with Joe and these receivers. Okay. I mean, because what we're hearing is that it is off the charts. It is huge, and I'm ready to see it. Number three, on the edge, can we knock the quarterback down off his spot? Can we do that, particularly with a team that's a little bit inferior to us at the moment, 
right? Because that's going to that's going to determine how much pressure is on that secondary, and it will give them an opportunity to kind of play into their positions, play into shape, if you will. Will we be able to get to that quarterback and knock him down? Need to look for that. Number four, Jalen Wright. He was prepared to leave at the end of the year. Remember that? They got him an NIL deal, and he stayed. He's another one of these players that the coaches have just been raving about. What are they raving about? Well, allegedly he's gotten bigger, stronger, faster. And now he's got the number zero. Remember he dropped the deuce yesterday. <laughs> he got a zero. Jersey. Is he going to be the numero uno running back? Does Jabari Small take a back seat? I'm anxious to see how this is all going to play out. What about Dylan Sampson? Huh? Supposedly was the future of the Tennessee running back room last year. Haven't heard a word about him. It's all been about Jalen uh, Jalen Wright, right? And something I heard from Coach Matt, <clears throat> who's the running back coach, uh, some of the, he said this week that I, I think that Cam Selden, or the way that I interpreted it, I think that Cam Selden might be running a kickoff, a two on this. I mean, they, they're in love with this guy, Cam Selden, not only as a running back, but as a running back out of the backfield as receiver. And now I hear that he's going to be running back a punt or a kickoff or two. So that will be interesting and something worth looking forward to. Look, all the pundits are saying Tennessee is going to be eight and four, or at best nine and three. I say Patui. They have to say that stuff because they don't follow it as closely as we do. Now that could happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're in store for another eleven win season. I do. Um, they're saying that Texas A&M is going to come into Neyland Stadium and beat us. Texas A&M is not going to come into Neyland Stadium and beat us. That is not happening. Now, we may lose to Alabama on the road. And I've said prior to this broadcast that that's my fear, is losing to Alabama on the road. And that's no shame in that. But it's just a college, revenge, elite football team's scenario and the way they lost last year <laughs> they're not happy trust me on that right so good chance they could lose that game i guess and i think an equal good chance is that georgia could come into the stadium and have the same situation happen to them that alabama had last year i think the possibility not probability, but the possibility of us beating Georgia this year <clears throat> is high. I do. And that's going to render us a, what, 10 and 2 season if that happens. Um, I'm sorry, an 11 and 1 season if that happens. If Alabama beats us and we win Georgia and then the other games, of course. That's eleven and one. Guess what that puts us? Guess where that puts us? It puts us in the college football playoff where we want to be. But I would rather beat them both. Would you? Now, taking a moment here, we have to touch on a somber note. Football is not just about the game, but about the community. The Tennessee football team is standing with Virginia, honoring the victims of that tragic shooting last year. It's pretty classy. I appreciate this and what Heupel has done. Uh, with the helmet decals of each player that was involved tragically in that shooting last year. Thoughts go out to Deshaun Perry, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Devin Chandler, and certainly all their family members and friends and team members that were involved and affected by this heart-wrenching event. So I get this sweet comment from Lana Laughs Real Loud, and I appreciate all of her comments. 
<laughs> she wants the McAllen Castles video. And you can see that right up there if you want to go look at that one. Uh, and she left a nice message saying, A humble young man, ain't he? McAllen seems to be a sharp tool in the shed, and we're darn lucky to have... We're darn lucky he chose to be a Tennessee volunteer. You're 100% correct. This is one of the most refreshing college football players I have ever seen. And from the get-go, he has been so excited about the opportunity to come play for Tennessee. And everybody is another one of those players that everybody, coaching staff, particularly Halsley, uh, is just saying, man, this guy is great. I mean, he's so happy to be here. He's really talented, and he loves to hit people. <laughs> and this is a tight end. <laughs> so that means that not only can the guy catch, he's got catching skills, but he also has blocking skills. And that's important. So thank you, Lana. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're 100% correct on that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it got me thinking, there are so many stars we're itching to see on the field this weekend. Let me know in the comments, drop it below, who your pick is. Who are you most in order, the top three people you're interested in seeing this weekend? Drop it in the comments and let me know. We'll talk about them. Who is up for a little virtual tailgating on Saturday for the game? I was thinking about doing a live during the game. Now, I won't be broadcasting the game in any way. I'll just be doing a live so that we all can gather and move in and out throughout the game. Watch it on TV together. Make our comments. What do you think about that? I, I, I'm not going to do it just by myself. If, if you think you might come and think it might be fun you know we can have a whiskey or two watch the game make a few comments all in good fun right i think it'd be great what do you think let me know if you're interested as always if you enjoyed this video go ahead and smack that like button pow just like they owed you money or it was your girlfriend's bottle and subscribe and more. And if you're feeling fancy, drop a super thanks. I appreciate you. Remember, life's like a skunk at a perfume convention. It ain't right, but it sure is funny. <laughs> hey, see you in the next video. Go Big Orange.